Hello and welcome to tonight's episode of Drachman Demigods, the Links of Tartarus campaign. My name is Sammy Ferber, and I'll be your host for the evening. Welcome back. Sorry we were off last week, but we're back and better than ever. Um, so, very excited about tonight's session. If you are new, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. Uh, if you need to catch up, we have all of our episodes available on our YouTube channel. Uh, every single one from Season 2, as well as from Season 1 which is all one continuous story. Uh, so, if you need to get caught up, go ahead and check those out. But, if you don't give a shit, I'm going to give you a little previously on right now. So, previously on the Links of Tartarus campaign. The Hands of Fate and their allies completed the trial Zeus had given them, granting them clearance to come to Olympus for the Grand Council of the Gods, coming up in about a month. However, in order to get there, they'll still need to climb Mount Olympus and face some final test before being able to actually step foot on Olympus. But that's a problem for their future selves. In the current moment, they have a few weeks of prep. Anura used this time to finish their personal quest they've been on this entire time, to travel to each habitat of Gaia to learn about the local animals there that they could then turn into. Completing this allowed them to undergo a sacred ritual, transporting their consciousness to Artemis on her private plane called the Beast Wilds. Once on this plane, Artemis conjured up images of the other Hands of Fate party members to join Anora as they explore this vast, endless wilderness. There are creatures to see, creatures to hunt, journeys to undergo, and at the end of it all, when Anora sits down to pray, Artemis herself will visit them with whatever happens next. So, Anura, you are in this vast wilderness. Reed, Adagio's uh, childhood friend, brother, uh, has just left you to your own devices. Huntress Alexandra, as you turn, is also gone. You are now alone, surrounded by these extremely lifelike images of your friends. And you take in this deep breath of fresh forest air, air that you have loved ever since you were a child. But this air is different. It's like there's not been a single tree ever cut down in this world. The air is pristine. And in that air, you feel the buzzing of life, all sorts of life. Insects, mammals, reptiles, birds, things beyond description. You can feel them just out of your visual range, just out of your sense. But you can feel their life force, their energy, everything tied to this wilderness itself. What are you doing? I was muted that whole time at that point. Um... So I'm going to start looking around at like different animals that I don't know anything about and start looking for like, you know, Hunter's Alexander had mentioned a T-Rex. Go ahead and make a nature check. Okay. That is a 24. 24. So just in this immediate location that you're currently in, which looks like a small clearing in an otherwise endless forest, um, the animals that are around your immediate vicinity aren't terribly uh, extreme or exotic. Um, you see woodland creatures that you've seen many times before. Some have maybe alternate fur patterns, um, or maybe a call that sounds a bit different than the ones that you have seen prior, but you see squirrels and rabbits and deer and wolves. Um, at one point, as you just sort of begin to wander through this wilderness, you see a pack of wolves led by this larger white wolf with these icy blue eyes that seems to, as it steps, the ground beneath its feet so it seemed to harden and frost over. But beyond that, around the immediate vicinity, these animals are fairly consistent with the animals that you're familiar with. Okay, can I start looking for stuff out of the ordinary? So I'm going to say, so, yes. Um, I'm going to say as you begin to explore this environment, I'm going to have you roll a d20. Okay. 
I just set my d20 down. Why couldn't I find it? Uh, that is a 12. 12, okay. I just want to find a dinosaur. Okay, so, 12. After, it's hard to say time here. It's one of those weird sort of alternate planes where you're unsure the time of day. Almost to the point where, as you come across a doe, let's say, and you have the inkling to notch your arrow and strike it down, it's almost as if the world around you becomes nighttime to aid in your stealth in trying to catch this doe. And then when you decide against it, it's as if the sun becomes bright and warm again and the doe chews and and wanders away. Um, But it's not terribly long before you hear the sound of a stream and you follow the sound until you find yourself at this larger clearing than the one that you sort of popped into. Um, You see that the forest continues, but the stream sort of widens into more of a proper river. And all over, all around this river is this large sort of grassland area before the forest once again takes over. And in this grassland, it is teeming with life, foreign life to you. Um, There are some creatures that you're familiar with here. You see tigers uh, drinking at the river. You see uh, a pride of lions elsewhere cleaning themselves. But you see utterly bizarre creatures as well. You see a sort of rough, leathery, almost like elephant-skinned creature, but huge, much larger than any animal you've seen before. It has these four sort of stumpy legs and this long tail and this long neck that almost looks like a giraffe neck, but it goes beyond what any giraffe could possibly hope to achieve. And you see a pod of five or six of these bizarre creatures all sort of walking and lowering their enormous necks down to drink or reaching up to the tallest trees to eat some leaves. Um, they seem completely gentle and enormous. And you hear in the background. Oh, shit. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Sorry, I've just been like freaking out this whole time. <laughs> so, in, and so I'll I'll say in case it wasn't clear that um, throughout this entire adventure, you'll be rolling d twenties and various things will happen, or you'll come across various different scenes. Okay. Um, can I, like, I'm assuming the rest of, like, the party has been following behind me this whole time? Yes, yes, they are just with you. Okay, so, like, as we come into this clearing, I'm gonna, like, crouch down a little bit to make sure, like, you know, trying to not immediately draw attention to us by all the animals that are here. Mm -hmm. And, like, hold my hand up like this, and I want to see if there's a way that I can go around to, like, one of the ones that is on the edge and almost have it off by itself in a way. So like the one that's farthest away from the pack. Um Okay, so you're more than more than able to try. Um I will say that because this large clearing is sort of uh the the river is sort of in the center of this larger clearing, you'd have to go a bit of a ways into the open grasslands before you come close to one of these creatures. Okay. Yeah, so I just want to get within, like, knocking an arrow's range ready. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for, like, long, like... longbow range, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and make an, a perception check to see if you can identify one that you could easily pull away from the herd. Okay. Oh, that was an after 20, so 24. 24, okay. Um, so <clears throat> these seem to be sort of pack mammals in general. Um, they are un- unified. You don't see one that's particularly like far away from the rest of, of the, the pack, but what you do see is one that is significantly smaller than the rest. Um, and the way that one of the larger ones is 
checking up on it, you get the sense that this is a baby of whatever this species is. Um, and the baby, unlike the adults, seems to be a bit more curious of the world around it. And so you do see the baby every now and then go sort of back and forth out to explore something and then back to the comfort of mom and then out to explore something and then back to the comfort of mom. Okay. God, I feel bad doing this then. <laughs> Samuel, why couldn't you make it straightforward for once? Sorry. This is the um, Beast Wilds. This is what these, these are here for. I know. Um, so when the child goes off to the side then, away from the rest of the pact, I'm going to not use, um, a fucking arrow when it's a goddamn dinosaur. Um, where is it? Where is, what level is the spell? Um, so I'm going to, as soon as it goes all the way off to the side, cast, um, all lightning at, no, wrong spell, my bad. <laughs> I don't know my spell names. I'm just going to cast Guiding Bolt. The Stand energy is coming <laughs> out right now. Yeah. Yeah, wrong anyone thing. want some, some fried baby brachiosaurus <laughs> i'm good i'm gonna cast a uh, guiding bolt at third level go ahead and make your attack okay all right uh that is going to be i can't do math a 26 26 certainly hits go ahead and roll damage and i'll also add for for the rest of you that while you are sort of the imagined versions of your characters, you'd still have your full abilities uh, and consciousness for the sake of... They're really, really good projections. So you can feel I free to jump in whenever you'd like. I remember um, Anora saying that my imagined version could fly 60 feet. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> okay. 16, 20... 24, 27 points of radiant damage. 27 points. So this is a baby dinosaur, so it's not terribly hardy. So it sort of goes to look at, uh, it looks like a, a, a herd of gazelles that are that have just come out into the clearing to drink at the river. And this dinosaur sort of floppy-necked has gone over to see what's going on before suddenly this blast of radiant energy it's just a, a, a momentarily bright light and all of these animals sort of like lift their heads and turn to look as this baby dinosaur just sort of collapses and falls partially into the river that killed it yeah it's a baby i didn't it's a dinosaur though <laughs> it's uh, still a baby I would still think it's a little bit, you know. <laughs> How does it robust? feel to be a monster? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to go back and blood. watch Land Before Time after this. It's going to be horrible. Uh, what they, what's happening now? Littlefoot? What was the name? Okay, hold on. Was it actually Little was it Littlefoot? Oh, damn. They just killed uh, Littlefoot. <laughs> so if, if, you, if you stick around to watch, um, slowly, uh, while the other animals sort of go back to business um the mother dinosaur slowly makes her way over to this body cranes her neck down and you see it sort of nuzzle at the body sort of trying to jolt it or something uh before it sort of lifts its neck and wails this primal wail to the skies and you see the rest of the pack all follow suit until there's this sort of oddly beautiful but awful harmonic wail okay but they don't seem to be ready to like attack or anything doesn't seem that way okay what have you done that was a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank, you. The back. Thank you. <laughs> I want to get closer, but if it looks like they start to get very like agitated, I want to stop. 
Okay. So you're you're coming out into the clearing? Yes. Okay. Do you want the party to follow you? Um I not to start with. So like if I if they start to get agitated and I can't back up quick enough, then I want them to come, but not to start with. Okay. So you begin to step out into the clearing. And what's your uh passive perception? Uh 14. 14. Um as you walk out into this clearing, it's not the wailing dinosaurs that clock you first. It's the pack of tigers that clocks you first. And they seem very interested in you. Um, as soon as they do, before they can even, like, you know, move towards me to really attack, I want to go ahead and notch an arrow in Thornwind and be ready if they do, like, lunge. Okay. You notch an arrow. That's... Yeah. The tigers sort of, like, lift up and stretch. <laughs> and they just... All their eyes are on you, just sort of watching what happens next. Yeah, so I'm not going to, like, emroach on their territory if I can help it, but I'm going to, like, you know, start moving towards the dinosaurs instead. Okay. Just to get a better view. Okay. You begin to get closer to these dinosaurs. You're now within, like, shouting distance of them. What, what would you like to do? I just kind of want to, like, observe what they're doing, like, if they've stopped with the whaling, if, like, what they go back to doing and just stuff like that, you know, kind of see them in their habitat. Okay. They whale for a, 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 a fair amount of time. Um, it's sort of a, a bit of a call and response that seems to go in waves that it escalates, it escalates, it escalates, it escalates, and then it sort of rescinds before escalating again. And you go through, like, maybe three or four of these waves before it sort of doesn't quite hit the same highs as it was before. Um, and the pack seems to understand that it's time to move on from this place. Um, you see the mother who has not moved from this spot nuzzles the body once more enough to push it fully into the river before she and the pack begin to head out of the clearing into the far tree line okay so once they've headed into the far tree line i want to motion the rest of the party carefully and i want to go to the river where the baby is at okay what would you like to do uh when i get there i just want to like you know study it a little bit closer because it's something new that i've never seen before and then i want to make sure its eyes are closed before we move on sure uh go ahead and make a medicine check okay can i, I am good at those I, I would like to take advantage of my dark vision mm -hmm. and look into the water Sure. If there's anything oh, wow. in the surrounding area that could be swimming towards us. Uh, go. 27. 27 for you. We're going to make a perception check. Um, Anora, <laughs> it's it's odd to examine these because you have no real frame of reference. Um, it does bear some sort of resemblance to modern reptiles, but also sort of bird-like in some other ways. Um, the eyes are closed. 16 16 for you um not much else to glean besides the fact that this is clearly something that you have not seen anything like on earth okay um ryujin with a 16 there are fish of all shapes and sizes in this river um the most aggressive of which you see some piranhas and that sort of thing um but none that seem that they're like in attack mode um but being here seeing this water seeing these creatures it does remind you of that water creature in the the champions arena in Voltura. so it was nessie it 
uh, allowing these two things to exist, it does sort of seem like you may be able to connect some dots. <gasps> it's Nessie. All that matters. <laughs> yeah. Nessie. Oh. Anora, you ready to move on? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and roll another d20 for me. Okay. You said that I felt like I should roll a completely different d20, and then I grabbed the same one. Let's grab a different one. Uh, that's a two. Two? Okay. Um, as you continue moving through this endless forest, you hear a lot of different sounds around you. Um, some... It's interesting... Sometimes the wind blows through the leaves and you can almost hear language on those breezes. What languages do you speak? Um, celestial, common, draconic, druidic, dwarvish, elvish, infernal, and titanic. All okay. of them. Uh, <laughs> so you actually don't recognize what these breezes are saying. Does anybody else recognize them? Um, does anyone speak Sylvan? No. Are you you're from Sylvan did. and you don't speak Sylvan? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so in my lovely. defense, I lived in a basement most of the time when I yeah, was there. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> They're like, yeah, the language? No, she's in the basement. Uh, so what, what you do feel, without understanding the words, you can see out of the corner of your eye, sometimes the trees seem like they move or... Maybe that's not quite the best way of describing it. Maybe it, it's leaves that jump from tree to tree. Maybe that doesn't quite describe it either. It's hard to tell. It's always out of the corner of your eye. You're never looking at it directly. But it almost looks like part of the tree is able to leave the tree and whisper about you. Giggle about you observe okay. you before jumping into another tree and it's gone it's bizarre yeah very bizarre would you like to keep I going just, yeah i'll just keep my eye on that as like we keep moving sure um as you continue moving you quickly not quickly but you eventually discover that this endless forest is not itself actually endless if anything, you seem to be in a forest area of what is an endless wilderness. And the difference being that eventually you reach a point in the forest where you see before you no longer trees, but vicious tundra. Keep walking along the tree line, eventually that tundra becomes sandy desert. And you have the feeling that while the forest might be the sort of central hub of this plane other areas of wilderness sort of extend like spokes on a wheel out of this forested area like the arena in catching or catching fire <laughs> sure sure yeah that's so fucking cool holy shit um the tree that gets struck by lightning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep looking for like more animals and things that I've never seen before. Okay. Um, you see all sorts of animals that you've never seen before that look similar in type to that large creature that you, that you saw. You see one that um, is smaller, maybe the size of... Um, the size of uh, an extremely large bear, the size of an owl bear, maybe, um, that has a sort of uh, a beak on its leathery skin, and it has these plates on its back that sort of go up along its spine with a spiked tail at the end. You see another one that um, is roughly the same size, a bit smaller, um, but has this beautiful, ornate sort of dish horn on its head um that has beautifully intricate feathered design on it with these three horns coming out of its face um you also see uh in 
at one point where a river has widened into more of a lake, you see more creatures like the one from Voltura that are sort of just swimming through this lake, as well as other ones like a shark that's much larger than any shark you've seen on Gaia. Um, and who knows what else is down there as well. Oh my god. Okay, so one of the dinosaurs, I want to start hunting one of them. What would you like to hunt? I, there's so many options. Um, you can, can talk, you... Alexios. Let's get them all. That's the biggest shark I've ever Surprise, it's Pokemon. <laughs> you gotta start with one. Okay, Sammy, assign them all a number for me in our whole D4. Let's get the Meg. We're gonna fight uh, Tromacrates. Of all no. the ones that we've seen, just assign them all a number. I'm rolling a D4. Okay, go ahead. It's a one. The Megalodon. <laughs> if, you want, if you want to do the Meg, let's do the Meg. Let's do the Meg. Yes! Let's go! What? Wait! Oh, this is the best thing ever! If you ever. can turn into a Megalodon, I will... Can I turn into a Megalodon? Okay. No, it's way too high of a challenge rating. Ugh. Damn yeah. it! <laughs> you can't turn into a T-Rex, either. They're just cool. Can I turn into a smaller version? A shark? Absolutely. A big-ass shark? No, I'm a normal shark. Can we, like, make a smaller version that does not have the same things, but I can just look like it? No, but there are four dinosaurs you can turn into. I thought there was five. I believe there's four. Hold up. Velociraptor, Dinonychus, Demetrodon, and Hadrosaurus, I believe, are the four dinosaurs that are under the challenge rating level. There's five. What's which one did I miss? Um, I can't say these names with the amount of sleep I have. Can we? I'm just gonna stuff? send them real quick. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm gonna type them real quick so you can see them. But um, <laughs> let's do the Meg and I'll, while I'm typing. <laughs> okay, so you have come to this large sort of uh bean shaped lake. You have seen briefly this enormous shark fin pierce the top of this lake before descending once again into the depths. What's your strategy? What are you doing? Um. Does it have any inks in the armor? Any. Any open wounds from another shark, maybe? Uh. Make a perception check. Yeah. Um, I want to just go ahead and have... A ten. Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it's a beautiful, you? perfect specimen. Yeah. I want to wait until it comes up to the top, and when it comes up to the top, I want to have another third-level guiding bolt ready to where it surfaces. Okay. Where Anyone else want to do anything? You, uh, with the trident and the, like, horse shield wall thingy can you move it or is it just like a set like um, wall thingy it moves right. with the does it move with the trident i assume it would move with the trident because it's i it believe so of the trident yeah um i'm also like, going is to... it like a prism or is it just like a, a gate like can horse... you move it up out of the water I just sent uh, them. What? <laughs> um, I want to also go ahead and take the starry form archer before I, of course. How far away is it going to surface? Well, it's hard to say. It depends on where in the lake it surfaces. The lake itself is maybe like 150 feet at its longest point. So it, it, it could be a, a pretty solid distance. Okay, cool. Well, then I will... Uh be invisible and try and like hide somewhere where it can't see me and pull out my crossbow when it comes out sure uh i love it just immediately all of us are just like sneak attack yeah yeah yeah. um i will say since it's a a water creature it probably can't see too much uh beyond the surface of, of the lake so not very hard go ahead and make a stealth check Twenty-five. 25. You got it. You are extremely stealthed. Um, um, I want to walk up to Nora. 
look them up and down and be like, hmm, how can I make this me? Just start glowing and then guiding bolt, same position. <laughs> <laughs> what? All right. I'm like, match the stance and everything. Don't know what I'm doing, but you look confident. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm just going to look to Adagio and just like, I mean, this isn't real Adagio. And go, this is the most sibling energy. I'm here for it. <laughs> All right. So. Would this be considered a beast? It is a beast. So, another thing that the trident does is I can cast Dominate Beast. Mm. So, but I have to be within 60 feet. So, we'll see. Is it within 60? Well, well you don't know yet. Middle. I'm about to roll to see how far away it surfaces. I'll just wait until it's in Why land. don't you see what it wants? Like, go talk to it. Yeah, you can talk to it, right? This is a megalodon. You're on crack. We know. But you can wants. talk to it, though. Please. Like, really? Like, could you actually talk to you it? You are on the side of Poseidon. <laughs> Sammy, if I stick my head in the water, in like two feet of water, and I go, hey, what's your name? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can absolutely do that, but I will remind you that there's more than just the megalodon in these waters, just so you know. Oh, right. There's like <laughs> piranhas and shit. Just like, hey, what's you can your talk name? To all of those. Cody, what's your name? Ezekiel! I'm gonna Fuck stick you, my head in the water and try and talk to this thing, and all I'm gonna hear is nom nom, and then it's gonna swim for <laughs> us. Okay, it makes no sense for you to be afraid of a megalodon, but you literally stuck your head in the water to speak to uh, Papa Trump. Messy. Messy. You did that with Messy. no. Alright, I'll do it. I'll just, you know, if my nose gets bitten off by a piranha, it's fine, I guess. <laughs> Alright, nice you're sticking now, your you face in? Well, I mean, with the dark vision, seeing through the water, making sure there's nothing that's going to bite my face in immediate vicinity in only, like, two feet of water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, what's your range of dark vision? 120 feet. 120 feet. Okay. What would you like to say? I'm going to say... How should I address this man? Hold on. What do I... Hey, what's big guy. your name? <laughs> what, uh... What do you want? What, what's up with you? Go ahead and make a persuasion check. Oh, no. Hey, well, what's I'm your name? Actually, no, no. Actually, this is the perfect opportunity for animal handling. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm good at that, but I can't help you. <laughs> I get question oh. 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 I rolled a natural five. fucking 20. 21. No. Um, so, oh. a couple of things happen in quick succession, Ryujin. Um, <laughs> you see... In your, in your 120 dark vision range, um, you already currently have visual on a lot of sort of smaller fish that are just sort of hanging out in these waters. And as you speak, they sort of react to it, almost like the sound waves are pushing them um, before quickly they all scurry out of your sight. And you can hear their voices as well as you can understand um, all of these creatures. You can hear them going as you hear a much deeper voice who are you say it again who are you he asked who I am <laughs> uh, <laughs> or is we can't it, hear uh, you. Your head's underwater. Oh, I'm going to come back up for a second. Just shoot my head out of water. It asks who I am. Uh, uh, I'm just answering the Megalodon. All right. I'll go back down. Um, <laughs> really, like, because can, can anyone else hear me talking to these fish right now? Or is it just. It's just. Blah, 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 blah. Right. I love that. That sounds super, super, like. It is I, Ryujin, the son <laughs> of Poseidon. Yeah. You see, at the range of your 120 vision, just at the edge of it, out of the darkness, comes this enormous creature that stays around 100 feet away from you, still underwater, and you hear it say, You smell like meat. You see it has As... these rows and rows and rows of sharp teeth. You smell like meat as well. 
<laughs> Are you meat? What is happening? Come and because. have a taste. <laughs> that sounds oddly sexual, and I don't like it. <laughs> Fish Fish off, right? All <laughs> megalodons are kinky. This is known. This is known. <laughs> <laughs> Is canonic lore. Um, Going on my quotes list. Hold up. Uh, well, I don't know what to do here now. Party input, please. Um, Tell North. them that we want to be friends. That's Tell a them direct lie. Is that not surface <laughs> yet? What do you mean? What? Has, has the megalodon surfaced at all? No, it's still very much underwater. Get him to surface. How about you come up to the come up up to the surface? I want to. You're a very interesting looking creature. I'd like to see you in all your mighty glory. The surface world. It serves me not. You come further. Dip your toes. My toes are quite dipped, as you can. see. My whole um, face is dipped. <laughs> <laughs> Let us see your fin, the mighty fin of a creature such as yourself. You must be prideful in your in your form, no? It swims to maybe about fifty feet in front of you. It's still about fifty feet underwater too. It's sort of looking up at you from fifty feet away. Come, there are treasures at the bottom of this water. <laughs> <laughs> there are treasures down here, young one. <laughs> well, give me like ten seconds. Hmm. I, mean, I could, you know, cast water breathing and just jump in. I'm gonna cast dominate beast with the trident now that it's when with within sixty feet. <laughs> okay, so what what does he do? I... So it's a wisdom saving throw of fifteen. Okay. Um, to attempt to beguile a beast that you can see within range, it must succeed on the throw or be charmed by you for the duration. Okay, that um, is a seven. <laughs> Sick. Do I just watch its eyes just gloss over? Yeah, he goes. Oh, it... oh. Is there really treasure down there? No. Well, technically, yes, but you won't get there. Can you fetch it for me? Uh, Please? As a friend? Make a persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> Fish are friends, not food. This Bruce actor, he calmed down. Um, bu -bu 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 persuasion? That's a plus 10. So I'm looking at a 23. 23? Okay. He swims down out of sight. And then after a few moments, he comes back and you see his giant toothy maw is filled with gold and uh, chains and swords and all sorts of fallen treasures from his past victims bones as well uh mm. yeah but he's got a bunch in his mouth might you swim up to the surface and maybe duck it the shallower waters it would also give us a chance to admire you in your glory your mighty fin and gills the size of your your hulking mass of a of a body, the thickness of your skin. <laughs> I feel like you're flirting with this yeah. megalodon. <laughs> Make another persuasion check with advantage. <laughs> I feel like you're flirting with him at this point. <laughs> Try to sleep with the megalodon. Twenty six. <laughs> oh, okay. And you see this megalodon sort of lifts up the extra fifty feet. And you all on the surface see this fin come up, and then the top of this enormous shark-like creature as it sort of swims to the edge of the lake and just sort of 
pukes up <laughs> this treasure. Can I look to Ryuji and be like, can we fight now? No. <laughs> but, but, okay, listen. He's a nice megalodon. Well, he or she, she they, they're nice. I mean, you, they did want to eat me. I charmed them with the trident. Otherwise, okay. They, so he wanted to eat you. Why can't we fight them? Yes, that's. <laughs> It's up to you. You are the son of Poseidon. And in this world, let's go. <laughs> DJ's just know. shaking it at. He's like, imagine. <laughs> DJ's you're like, you're just imagining like, this. Like... You're fighting with yourself right now. These are not <laughs> friends. Not friends. <laughs> it's actually Anora's <Nora's> inner struggle. <laughs> Artifice just gives you a dash of schizophrenia. Call oh, lightning. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you guys want to attack it, feel free. I I will say um also another thing with dominate beast I know is away. um that if you or creatures that are friendly to it are fighting it, it has advantage on the saving throw, but that already happened. Right, um, but how often does it get to remake the save? Is it the same at the end of each of its turns? Um, you can use your action to take tools. Um, let's see. Each time the target takes damage, it makes a new wisdom saving throw against the spell. Oh, there we, the go, there we go. If it succeeds, the spell ends. There we go. So every can time I you attack it, it in preparation of this fight. Can I can just? Big fight? Instead of attacking it, since it is a water creature and not the whole party can really do anything with that currently, and I wasn't prepared for, like, you know, a water battle, can I just get Ryujin to get it closer to the water so I can study it? Alexia is so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can attack it if you want. I understand that I charmed it, otherwise it would be hostile. It's a megalodon. It wants to eat us. It's do you, do you not have water breathing? I don't think I have water breathing prepped. So I could turn it into something you? and go underwater, Wait. but I couldn't get it where anybody else can. <clears throat> I wonder if they're gonna have water. Can I look in this treasure really quickly? I know it's not like real treasure because this is a, <laughs> you know, but I'm just curious. What did this guy? What did yeah, this guy, I mean, what, like, what did he get? All put together, it's about like a thousand gold pieces. Um, I will say, go I ahead and and treasure. make make a dexterity check for me, Ryujin. Uh, oh. what, Anora? Did I actually keep this treasure oh. since this is kind of real to Anora? I mean, you're not here either. Okay. I just want <laughs> You you are in uh, a forest. 18. Uh 18. Okay, uh as you're sort of examining this sword, it turns out it looks like it's just an ordinary sword, it's not magical or anything like that. Um there's a brief moment where you almost cut yourself with it, but you are mm -hmm. able to sort of uh just let go of the sword as it sort of fumbles out of your hands and you do not cut yourself. What does that sword no, do? Just a normal sword? Just a normal sword? I feel like it's not. Why would I have almost cut myself? Is it it's wet, rusted? It's and wet and slimy. What would have happened if he had cut uh, himself, Sammy? I don't know. I don't trust you. That's your No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> the has poison saliva. We're not talking about the me All right. doing the I'm um, watching you thing. We're ignoring that happening. Okay, listen. So I'm. I am concentrating it's concentration up to a minute so this just ha you guys make up your mind if you want to attack attack it. yeah time's running out i just want to study it and then as a group we will decide okay you can study it when it's dead can we pick the different emotions we're not even here <laughs> yeah but you're playing yourselves i'm talking about like real life make a decision <laughs> y'all are gonna uh, give me like Split personalities in real life. Right this. Well, for damn. the for the remaining like fifteen seconds of this spell, 
Um, you can get right up to the edge of the, the lake, Anora, and examine this megalodon. And Ryuji even asks it to just, like, open its mouth wide so you can just sort of look at the six layers of teeth in its mouth. And it just sort of presents almost like a Sea World show. It's sort of presenting for you. Oh, I... <laughs> this is that thing that Jason Statham, buddy. What? All I can think of is when the jaws open wide and there's more jaws inside. That's more. Yeah. Ah, um, we... Uh, but, Ryujin, you can sense that your influence is about to fade from this creature. I, I'm about okay. to lose it, guys. Make a, make a decision. Don't make a decision. I'm fine. I shoot it! Yes. Go ahead and make your attack. Yes. And then I'm ready to advantage. shoot as soon as one of them does. Let's roll initiative, shall we? Is this not a surprise round? I'm just going to assume that I'm going last because I still have concentration up for as long as that's going to last. I will say Ilmay... Ilmay is going to go first. Actually, let's hold off on initiative until we finish what Ilmay does. So, Ilmay, what's your attack roll? Okay, wait. So, I get advantage because... Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 25. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Plus sneak so attack. Now, okay, and it's a crit. Is it? Okay. That's yeah. what I was about to ask. And... Okay. Bless you. Sorry. Bless you. I really need to just sneeze for like the past five minutes. Oh my god. You got you. Oh. Okay, I got I got to grab dice. Give me a second. <laughs> Is Ray using that weird ice staff we stole? Uh, Not I don't think at so. This moment. No. But yes. Also, okay, maybe, do I still have everything, including, like, underbrush, since I put underbrush in the bowl? Yeah, 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 you have everything. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't know if I had underbrush, because I had put it in the bowl with the gems. No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm ignoring me. My allergies have just said zero to a hundred in the past, like, hour. Elmay, how we doing? Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm counting. No, it's okay. It's a lot here. I think I was like, I think I went out last mm -hmm. session when we were like explaining this. Is this like whatever we kill, you get to turn in? Or get to like skin stuff? Like, no, no. Are we so, on the hunting? So, Anura, Anura can still only turn into things that, that druids are able to turn into. So, there's only a few dinosaurs that are under the challenge rating cap. For them to turn into um but beyond just those creatures that they can turn into this entire realm is designed for artemis and her followers so it is designed to appreciate the animals appreciate nature but also to hunt like incredibly fearsome foes like remember when you guys uh encountered that chimera and you learned that artemis had created chimeras in order to give herself more of a challenge while hunting so a lot of these creatures whether they were once on Gaia and then were removed from Gaia, or if they were just Taking created here, here, yeah, for instance, um, or if they were just created here to give Artemis and her hunters more of a challenge and more fearsome foes to fight, it's unclear. It was okay. uh, when when Kratos, not Kratos, Jesus, Kronos, Kronos. <laughs> <laughs> when, when Kronos took out the 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 stone maybe you know uh -huh. gullet, and he threw it at the earth it rocketed into the gulf of mexico and there you go, took there you go. The dinosaurs that's it what? No, Ilme, you what'd you roll 68 <laughs> points of damage 68 you said 68 68 oh, no. okay so um it takes that hit heartily um but that does allow him to make another save on the uh, charm, even though it's a, about to fa fail anyway. Interesting. Uh, since I had had a spell and everything prepped and ready to go, do I still get to make that attack? I would say no, because up until this point, you've been actively researching and, okay. and examining. What about um... But what I will say is we're about to roll initiative, and we'll see what happens next. So go ahead and roll initiative. What about the other people, though, who weren't studying who had prepped? Because uh, Adagio had prepped the spell. We will see what the order determines. Okay. Cool. Okay. 
damage. Roll initiative. So, anybody over 20? 21. What's not blood stint? Uh, Lexios, what'd you get? Um, 19. I did uh, math wrong. <laughs> uh, any other ni- uh, 20 to 15? Or was uh, I just 17. And what was that, Adagio? 18. Okay. Emilia, El May, what the hell is going on? I rolled really low. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, region... but she still has a, what, 18? Yeah. Region, where you at? A 12. Well, for region. Okay, so this actually works out pretty well narratively. Um, well, this is the first time I've went this early in a long time. So, with a nat 20, the Meg goes first. Yeah. Oh! I am out of the water. I know. Right in its but mouth. Anura's right in its mouth. From the shore. Oh, 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 oh. Are you actually? It's like deep yes, ocean. I was studying oh. it when I only attacked. Oh. Uh... You said you decide, so I decided. Whoops. I thought I'd get warning. So. No warnings. <laughs> Anura, no warning. suddenly yeah. you you are looking at these rows and rows of teeth, and then you see Ilmay's bolt fire into it, and you hear, <clears throat> and the eyes that are sort of glazed over become fearsome, beady, black eyes, and you can just see the teeth getting much closer, and oh, ksh- and then it chomps down on you. Um, does a 21 hit? Oh no, Sammy, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Sue? <gasps> that's going to be... In the beast wild, maybe? No. That's going to be ni- 19 points of um... piercing damage, and you are grappled in its mouth. Um... It is then going to... Sorry, we don't have a, a battlefield for this. Uh, but it's then going to push off of the the edge of the lake. So it's taking you with it, Anura, as it just sort of goes more toward the center of the lake, um, toward Ilmay, as as much as, as it can. Um, Ilmay, how far from the surface of the water would you say you are? Um... I was probably maybe like 30-ish feet away. Sure, sure. That sounds right. Um, so, uh, so it sort of swims out to the center of this lake. So it's about, I'd say, 60 feet from the edge of the lake currently. Um, and it is going to see what happens. Oh my god, you're so lucky, Anora. With a nat one, it goes to swallow you, but underbrush sort of gets lodged in its mouth, and it prevents it from closing any further. Gimme. What is this? Anora, you're up. Best, you if you get okay. swallowed, what this is a massive creature. What can I do when I'm grappled? With gills. Uh, so you can use your action to try to escape the grapple with an athletics or acrobatics check. But I can't do anything otherwise. Uh, I mean, you can you can cast spells and stuff. Like you still have your arms that are free, um, but if you can't I move. If I was to, like, cast a spell, would I be able to like make it make a check to not drop me from surprise? No, that's my mechanic. <laughs> I didn't know. Like if I cast yeah. like lightning on it or something. Nope. Okay. Well, I'm gonna try and escape then. All right. Go ahead and make an athletics or acrobatics check. Okay. Well, that is a DJ is two. cracking up over there. <laughs> Did I ever roll wheel and woe for this? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember, so I'm gonna roll that real quick before I roll this, just to see if I can help myself. Sure. Okay, I rolled even, so I'm adding. Ooh, it's not bad. Oh, it's a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. So you do manage, with Underbrush's help, to push yourself out of the mouth of this beast, scraping your arms and legs on its sharp teeth as you plunge yourself into this lake. You're now about 60 feet from the edge of the water in in this lake, blood beginning to seep from your arms and legs. And you can see as the blood seeps into the water that the Meg's eyes seem to get even more intense on you. Hey, give me a second. 
Um, I think this is a thing that works this way now. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure. I'm pretty sure at this point I can use... I think I can... Yeah, I can t uh, turn into a wild shape as a bonus action now. Is that true? I think so. I think that was at level 12. That's what I'm trying to check. I think I think you can I think you can starry form as a bonus action, but you can't wild shape as a bonus action. If I'm if I, I, was a, if I remember wild correctly. shape was a bonus action. So I thought I that's the whole point of choosing um, circle of the moon instead of circle of the land is that you can wild shape as a bonus action. I don't. I'm not I'm, entirely sure though. I'm checking. It won't let me read it right. Just googling wild shape bonus action. <laughs> When you choose the circle, additionally, while you're transformed. That's not the one that I wanted. So if you're already in a starry form, can you wild shape again into something? That's... I thought you said you said you took you you uh, used your starry form archer before we started this whole encounter. Yeah. So you're already in a starry form. I am, yes. I know how to get to this if my computer will stop freaking the fuck out. Um, I mean, if nothing else, I'll go into a uh, dragon and I can get the hover speed and get out. But I thought with the wild shape improvement on the last one, I could. You, you let me know. Not. I'm looking. Maybe not. Maybe I'm an idiot who read something wrong. Which is what it's starting to look like. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just... Uh... Well, I can actually do that as a free action now. What? Changing my um, starry form is a free action now. It's not a bonus yes. action. Sure, yeah. So I'll go ahead and take the damage on it with the starry form archer before I change over to dragon. Sorry, what? It's I don't it does not cost a bonus action or an action to change my starry form anymore. Sure. No, yeah, I got that. I got that. So I'm already in starry form archer, so Correct. I'll do the bonus action damage for it and then change into dragon. I see what you're saying. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was like, why don't I just do that? Uh, that is a 24 to hit. That hits. Alright. Would it be a disadvantage because I just came out of its mouth? No. Even though Although it's I thought... Oh, no, you're right. It's disadvantage because you're in melee. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to be honest. Okay. It's it's still a 21. <laughs> yeah, you're still fine. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right, it takes 14 points of radiant damage. 14, you got it. Yep, and so with dragon, um, I gain a fly speed of 20 feet. Okay, so you can get so, 40 feet to the edge. Yes. Like 40 feet away from the edge, okay? Yes. That brings us to Alexios. Um, is the giant shark still on the surface? Yes. Yes, it is. I'm going to shoot the giant shark. Okay. How far away are you? Wait. Ooh. I figure, because I want to be too close to the water, that's a big fish. Yeah. And it's 60 oh, feet it from, from the edge right now. So if you were at the edge of the water, feet. you'd already be 60 feet away. Okay. So, I'd, I'd say I'd be like 10 feet away from the bank, right? Okay, so you're 70 feet away. Uh, did that, was I able to cast that haste that I mentioned? Did anybody hear me say that? I did not you hear did you say that. that. I, I did, did hear you say that. I did, I did hear but, that. But I'll say sure, yeah. When, when, the, when the spell was fading, you had time to sort of prep yourself. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to move. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move 30 feet towards it. The closest you can get is 60 feet unless you're going in the water. Oh, no. Um, can I get, like, knee high in there? Like, not too deep, or is it just a drop-off? I mean, you could get 55 feet and be up to, like, your thigh. Yeah, I'll do that. I just don't sure. want to, like, be completely submerged. How fast is this thing in the water? You have no idea. I'm going to say pretty fast. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, but first, I am going to bonus action. Fourth level branding smite. Okay, sounds good. So wait, real quick. It was right at the edge. And then without using a bonus action or an action to dash, it got 60 feet out into the water. That's correct. So it's got a 60 foot swim speed. Just put that out there. I just was like, real quick. Uh, 2040. 24 certainly hits. Go ahead, roll damage. Do I roll damage? And Adagio, you're on deck. Dang. Hold on. I need another D6. What happens if I die in here? Yeah. We wake up. Like every dream, right? No, oh, there's literally cases of people you die in who you die like, in real life. died in their dream and then died in real life. How would you know if they died in their dream, though, if they died in real life right after? Uh, there was you know I mean? one dude who literally um slit his own throat in his dream, and he literally, like, his last words before he died were, I did it in my dream, and now it is done in real life, and then he died. Uh, Disturbing stories. Twenty points of damage for the first one. Dream. Sorry, hold on, everyone. Everyone, shut up. What'd you say, Alexis? Oh wait, I forgot to roll another. Okay, so twenty-one points of damage for the first one. You got it. <clears throat> first shot uh, fires at this yeah, slippery scaled skin. Twenty-nine hits. I'm going to arcane joke the second one. Go ahead. Eight. <clears throat> Fifteen points of damage. Fifteen. Third is twenty-seven to hit. Hits. And that is eleven points. Nice. Okay. three shots from your gun and they all fire at this beast and you see <clears throat> little dots of red begin to appear before streaking down its body sort of looking around thrashing around <clears throat> adagio you're up i'll do a guiding bolt go ahead yeah. man oh uh, and that one you know, <clears throat> Anura's idea of Adagio, maybe it's like an overcompensation or something. <laughs> but yeah, the guy bolt just fires off into the distance. <laughs> Can we blame this on Anura? <laughs> yeah. Anything else, Adagio? I meant to do that. Just a bit of a distraction for all y'all. Elmay. To... Elmay, you're up. Okay, um... I'm going to activate my boots. Sure. That's my bonus action. Then I'm going to get... I'm just going to move 10 feet closer, so I'm right at 80 feet, because I said I was 30 feet away. Yep. And I will shoot my crossbow again. Go ahead. Oh, God. Uh... 20. Uh, dirty 20. Just hits. <laughs> hey, 15 points. 
15, not bad. Mm, with no, no sneak attack on that. No sneak attack, unfortunately. Um, anything <laughs> else, El May? I have used everything. All right, Ryujin, all you. <sighs> oh. It's still kind of at the surface? Yes, it's, it's fully on the surface, 60 feet away. I am going to lightning. Okay, go ahead. Uh, what's the save on that? Gonna be a dexterity seven. Hold on. I thought you were about to say seven. A dex eighteen now. All right, I've been rolling like absolute shit tonight, so let's not roll like shit. No, roll like shit. Oh, by all means. Yeah, yeah by all means, Sammy, roll like shit. That is a fifteen failure. There you go, Ooh. Sammy. You're the son of the water god, and you're about to destroy a whole people. Sister. <laughs> Just gonna throw it That's gonna happen. Listen, we are not real. <laughs> Blame it on Anora. <laughs> Remember when you were thinking about not killing this thing? Yeah, well, you yeah. guys changed my mind. Thanks for that. Um, <laughs> here we go. Listen, Four, blame it on Anora. Anora got attacked, and then everybody mm -hmm. attacked. In your head. Mm -hmm. In my head. Oh, Jesus That's Christ. Weird. In my head. In my head. <laughs> um, I had to unmute myself too. I was like, damn, no, I'm not going to make it. 14, 18, 19, 20. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 Yo, can I just say, I think this is the most fun we've had in a while. 28, 29, 30 points even. 30 points even. Lightning bolts in water makes oh. it a whopping 60 points. Mm. Oh, I'm glad I was hovering. Yeah. How many yeah. sixes do <gasps> Imagine if I if I did like almost max damage with the 10 D6 and then it was in water. So this Meg went from angry to like gen genuinely wounded. Um, as this lightning bolt strikes it. It takes it, you can see the black char mark like on the side of its uh, body. You can also see as the water sort of momentarily jolts with electricity, suddenly little <laughs> Oh no, I a killed like 30 little, little fish. fish just sort of <laughs> float to the surface. Um, Homer Simpson the fish. The mega's looking real bad. Um, Good. Um, but I it's his turn now. Unless ah. you can do anything else. I don't think I can do anything else. I mean, I've got like bonus action stuff, but nothing that would really help. Um, okay. Since he's in salt water, can I do salt in the wound? It's a it's a lake. It's but... a fuck. <laughs> but you can say no. it's a salty lake. It's a meg. Yeah, sure. Oh salt in the wound is fun. You never get to use it, so you can do it. It's um. I think it's like D6. a D6. <laughs> yeah, it's a D6. Listen, a D6 oh, is another D6 that it's not got. Roll the four. Hell hey, yeah. every little bit helps. And it's looking really bad. Um, on its turn, the first thing it does is dive underneath the water. And for a moment, <laughs> you're, for a moment, you're like, is is that is is it retreating? And maybe it is. But first, it leaves you with one last uh, image as it swims about 20 feet sideways before you see, like movies where the shark mm. grabs the seal, uh, floating just over the water is Anura, and you see this enormous <laughs> mouth poof, emerge from the water. Um, with advantage because Anora's <laughs> not at full health. That is not great. That's a 19? That hits. I have a this 17, is... Sammy. This is this is canonically the shark from Jaws. Right? <laughs> yeah. It, when it I'm died, thinking of that. Gosh. I'm thinking of the crocodile from Lake Placid right now. Yeah. That is 31 points of piercing damage, Anora. Fuck! 
This thing and has it, the same it, spirit as the stingray that kills It them. grapples Anora in its mouth, diving back into the water, and begins to descend. <laughs> it is able to get about 30 feet underwater with Anora in its mouth. So, are we, like, getting into specifics of, like, PSI? Or are we just... <laughs> Because <laughs> Megalodon can go deep. Listen, if I haven't deep. been able to use my science till now, we're not using it when it'll kill me. Anora, <laughs> it's your turn. What are you doing? I'm gonna use my action to get out. Go ahead. <laughs> Wild shape into a baby seal. <laughs> I think it could really just actually immediately swallow me then. <laughs> that is a 21. 21. Uh, you do manage as it begins to try to swallow you again, which let's see how that rolls. Ooh. Um, I'm, I'm going to need you to make one more strength save, please. Strength? Oh, fuck. Yes, I need you to make a strength save. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. We're at that. When, um, right, when you were describing it how it was getting ready. 17. 17. So as it momentarily opens its mouth to like, like chomp you down its gaping throat, you take that brief moment, it opens its mouth and closes it again, closing on more of you. You can feel the teeth piercing into your body. It opens it again to try to grab your head, but you use that moment to push yourself out of its jaws as it slaps down right underneath your feet, but you are now free from its gasp. What are you doing? Uh, I'm gonna swim up to the surface or use... Can, would my hover make me go back up to the surface? No. Um, my swim speed is only half of my movement speed, right? Um, yeah, but I, I would say your, your hover would allow you to use 30 feet of movement. Okay, then I'm gonna get back to the surface. Okay, you sort of did bob we, up like a buoy. Did we as soon as I get to the happened? surface, I'm going to be like, someone get me out of this lake! <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Nora? Did we establish what would happen if um, you used water walk underwater and you're just going to shoot up? Uh, I, I don't know. I'd have to look at the specifics of the spell. Um, I think it says in the spell that you shoot up like in a certain amount of like feet until you get up. There you go. If I was to change back over as a free action to... um. Uh, Archer, would I still uh, be able to shoot it from where it's at? Uh, yeah, it's only 30 feet below you. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Wonder does he... <laughs> Imagine how much different the movie Ariel would have been if there was a movie that just went... 19. <laughs> it was so close to a crit. 19. Wait, but plus a bunch of well, stuff, right? 19, not natural 19. Oh, oh, oh. then you're fine. So, that's that's uh, gonna hit. 20, oh, so a 30. <laughs> That's gonna hit. Go ahead and take your, uh, roll your damage. Alright, come on. Come Although, on. honestly, is it possible for you to roll less than two? No. Then take your moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I like how you said that, and I was like, is yeah. it possible rolling two dice with a plus four? Yeah. <laughs> I had to think about it. Um, okay, so as soon as Nora pops back up and changes over to Archer before they fall back in the water, um, I'll pull back, like, you know, the invisible bow that comes out from the um, actual mark. And when you see the arrow form, it's more in the shape of the half arrow of the mark than an actual arrow. And when it shoots down with its mouth still open, I wanted to go straight through the back of the throat. So, from the rest of your guys' perspective, you see Anura float away, this Megalodon reach up miraculously, chomp them, and then take them underwater. There's a brief moment of silence before Anura pops back up, eyes white, turns underneath himself, pulls out this spectral bow and fires it. And you just see this golden light. Like how light sources look underwater. It pierces the water and you just see it sort of fade. And then a little flash as you see it enter the Megalodon and come out the other side. 
It was a brief moment. It's a literal. Go ahead. Avatar state. Yes, oh. it really is. You can see Ryujin as you're one of the only people who can see it, and and nor because you have uh, this visual perspective. You see. They now said Mark. That's true. You see the megalodon thirty feet underneath, sort of stop, and then just sort of float down, down, down until there's nothing. Right. I'm gonna start swimming towards the surface, or back towards the edge of the lake. Absolutely. No problems getting out. You guys see Anora is covered in these teeth marks, and there's actually a couple uh, megalodon teeth that are stuck in their body. The piranhas okay. are gonna hold run on rampant to in this ecosystem now. <laughs> I wanna hold on to those, because I wanna ask Huntress Alexander the end if there's a way I can keep that. Mm -hmm. So... As you continue on your journey in the Beast Wilds, we're going to take our break for the evening right there. Um, you defeated a Megalodon, but there are many more adventures to be had here in the Beast Wilds. So you guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be back so soon. Be right back. And we are back. Welcome back. Let's hop right back into the Beast Wilds. So you have destroyed a Megalodon. Um, you have seen a bunch of other fun things. Would you please roll another d20 to see what you see next? Yeah. Does anyone else want to roll the d20 for fun? Sure. I will. Go ahead. I rolled an 11. 11? Um. <clears throat> okay. Um. You get into more of a heavily wooded area you see uh, a flock of birds overhead and then you see that flock of birds get torn apart by a flock of larger leathery creatures um, that look more akin to these new bizarre creatures that you've seen before. Um, they are far, far above you so it's more of a, a display than anything else but it looks like a flock of maybe uh, gulls or something like that. And then these larger creatures just sort of do these swoop by passes. And each time they swoop, one's gone, two are gone, three are gone. And, and before you know it, it's just these larger creatures flying in these skies. And the birds themselves are completely gone. Um, I'm going to cast Aura of Vitality real quick and get some hit points back. Sure, absolutely. Um, we'll like say over the course... Seen... Sorry. Oh no, nice. that's a lie. I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds instead. Sure. Alexios, what'd you say? Oh, I was that, I was talking I prepped nothing but healing like spells, by the way. I was oh. asking if those are like weird dragons, leathery flying. Uh no, they look more like um flying lizard creature things. Um, I'm gonna turn to Dagio then and be like, have you got any healing spells? Oh yeah, not in behavior spell. Cure wounds, our vitality, prayer of healing, healing word. I'm at 43 out of 83 hit points. God so. damn! I love that. I mean, I could get myself almost back to full with one cure wounds with everything else that I have. Can. Oh no, that's fine. I'll cast cure wounds hey, on a third level. <laughs> oh nice. That is twenty-three on my first cure wounds. Nice. <clears throat> Much appreciated, damn. Again? Um, no, I can do it with the first level cure wounds. Okay, perfect. Because that was third level. <laughs> yeah, I can do my, I can do the rest of it with the first level crew wounds for me. All right. That's a D8 plus four, then another D8, and then another one D8 plus four, because I'll change over to a chalice real quick for free. Sure. Be nice. <laughs> one plus four is 11. Let's see if I can do it without even doing the underbrush one. Uh, the answer is yes. Amazing. Um, I got the healing god. 
I don't heal. Who, My dad who represented else? by a liar. That's not the best liar player of the group. <laughs> who else would like to roll a d20 to see what happens next? I want to. I just Go ahead. Healing. I rolled a seven. Seven. Right. Okay. <clears throat> um, you come to uh, a wooded area that is not distinct from any of the other areas. Um, it just looks like more and more of this forest. But Ilmay, with the crazy high passive perception, stops everyone and points. Um, and you see a very cleanly visible line in the dirt that sort of arcs in this large arc that it almost looks completely flat from your point but you can see that it sort of stretches around some trees and is in a gentle arc um arcing away from you alexios you get the slightest twing from your sword oh um, um it's a dragon there's a dragon around. Let's not and say we did then. Why not? It's it's a dragon. Did you not see me almost get swallowed by Megalodon a minute ago? I mean, we still killed it. And we're here to basically just dragons of the sea, okay? So, like, I think we got a good chance. You know what I, mean? I want to find other things that I can turn into before I risk my life. This is a life risking thing. And this is you talking to you. So, <laughs> maybe I you stop take... with that shit. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you I think this is a good idea. Go... Yeah? find things I can turn into first. But I want to try and like kind of keep track of where this is and we can come back to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Whatever you say to you. <laughs> Fucking hate you. <laughs> Alright, so you see this line in the sand, you turn and you move away from it. Trying to, best you can, remember the specific direction it is although that itself will be a challenge in this sort of endless forest um alexis will, will you roll a d20 for me was that a sand dragon um no sorry i said sand time? soil can we take like extra time like in order for me to like keep track i want to make like marks on the trees as we go so i have a way to come back to it easier sure sure alexis it's a four Four. Okay. You guys come across um, uh, another small stream, much thinner than the river that you saw prior. Um, just some water rushing over some rocks and soil. Um, but you see on one side, <clears throat> excuse me, one side of this stream is the remains of some sort of campsite. Um, you can see some tree stumps set up around what was once a fire that is now just sort of blackened soil and wood and stone places where you could assume tents probably went but have now long since disappeared it's not anything um extravagant it actually looks just like a fairly normal campsite that you would find in the wilderness of gaia as well ilme you are able to feel i mean it's it's challenging there's constantly movement everywhere in this plane of existence leaves are constantly getting hit by creatures and wind is blowing and it's a little disorienting being aware of it all at the same time um what strikes you as a little bit odd about this area is that it's a normal level of movement meaning that in the context of this forest that you're in it feels eerily silent. Okay. Um, I'll convey that. And uh, can I tell how like old the campsite is? Do you say that? I don't remember. Um, if like you how, wanna, how long if you, it's been. Do you want to go over and like investigate it? Sure. Sure. What does uh, my go... passive give me? <laughs> 24. Um, I mean, from, from, from far away. Well, if I get up close. If you, if you get up close with a, with a 24, 
um, you sort of poke around the the fire pit and stuff. These ashes are long dead. Um, the coals are cold to the touch, wet. Uh, like it's probably rained since this was a used fire. Um, you get the sense that at the very most recent, it's probably at least weeks old. Okay. I don't know why it's quiet around here. This is like a really old campsite. Has Ilmay pointed out that it's super quiet? Yeah. Yeah, I said I did. Okay, I didn't catch that. Uh, can I like look around and make like a nature check or something to see like what's up with the animals and stuff in the area? It'd be more of a perception check. Okay, I didn't know for sure. Yeah. Like that. Uh, that'll be an 18. 18. Um, now that Ilmay has sort of addressed it, you can also hear this eerie quiet. As if the wilderness around you is sort of holding its breath. Um, looking around, and I, I assume you guys are somewhat close to Ilmay over here on, on this campsite. Looking around on the other side of the stream you see what looks like a, a, a fallen over tree that maybe fell, fell over in a storm or something like that, but the tree is still just sort of there horizontal. And you see something lying up against on the far side, like some creature lying up against that log. Can I see if it looks familiar in any way? Uh, are you going to sort of move around to get closer because right right now the log is basically blocking most of your vision yeah not super close but a little bit closer sure um make another perception check that's a 22 22 um without getting too terribly close it you can see what looks like part of uh, a humanoid leg as if someone is is sitting sitting up against the log with their back can I get and see where I can get, like, a better view of the person, maybe? Sure. As you sort of make your way crossing the, the stream, making your way, and it's sort of a wide arc just to be safe, the rest of the party's staying over by the campsite. Um, Ilmay, as Anura moves, you can hear this silence get slightly louder as if the silence is leaning in. Anora, around the same time you get a clearer view of this creature is around the same time Ilmay realizes what's going on. As you turn the corner, Anora, and you see this human leg that is not attached to anything, and Ilmay, you hear... The creature is coming from all sides, and you know you've walked into an ambush. What are you oh, doing? Oh, crap! Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm yelling out. I'm like, they're all around us. They're surrounding us. Get ready. As you see, five small chicken-like creatures with these enormous talons on their Sorry. claws. And... They pop out from five different directions, and then from five other directions, larger creatures. Similar in shape, but much larger, about the size of uh, a dog. Or, honestly, more like a, a small cow. But similar, similarly feathered, with white and yellow and black plumage, with these enormous talons on their feet. I need you all to roll initiative again. I got a nat 20 for initiative! Alright, hold oh, on, oh, hold Larry on. Oh, will still beat you. <laughs> but it's a nat 20! It, but with initiative, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. I thought it did! Not, not... It, initiative technically an ability check. Now I'm upset. <laughs> the one time I do good! But you did well the last time, too, with the Megalodon. Oh, come on. All right. I'm going to use a plus five for mine. Sure, sure. 
Wait, no, I'm just making them all appear. Wait, considering the ability check, does that mean I can add, I can add to it then? Well, we're well, yeah. If you'd like. Oh my, what is yours? I can, how, what's your, what can you roll? I can a roll D6. up to a plus six. I don't know, what's your initiative? A plus two, so I can oh, add. you'd have to get a six. To be tied with me. And then you still go first. Yeah. Uh, that was a fucking waste of a nap 20. <laughs> All right. Anybody over 20? 28. 22. Jesus Fuck you, Christ. Alexios. All right. 28 for El May. 22 for Alexios? 23. 23 for Alexios, 22 for Anora? Yeah. <laughs> um, Fucking waste right. of a nat 20. <laughs> then Adagio and Region, what are you at? 18. 18, Adagio, 15. <laughs> I'm glad you knew what they said, because I didn't. <laughs> okay. So, Ilme. You're up first. What are you doing? Okay, strategy. Give me a sec. I gotta figure out how far away I am from things. Okay, no, these are very tiny. Okay. None of them are within 30 feet of each other. That is correct, for... I believe. I mean, there uh, are well, some. Maybe... There are some pairs, okay. but... Okay, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna... I'm gonna pull out my crossbow. I'll use... No, I don't need to use that. Um, And I'll shoot at... D1. D1? Yes. You That's got within it. 80 feet. And I get I get advantage because I'm on the form. Go ahead. Okay, that is going to be a 24 to hit. Certainly hits. Okay. And don't get sneak attack this time. Correct. Wait, I get sneak attack if I roll advantage. Never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not a crit. It's not a crit. Yeah, it's just not a crit. I was like, Sorry. wait a sec, I rolled advantage. Yeah, I feel like we both knew what we, we were saying, but we didn't say the right thing. <laughs> yeah. That is the story of my life right there. Story of my life. I gave her home. I feel alone. To drive all night. Oh, that little black speck was just dirty. I thought this laptop had, was breaking. <laughs> 40 points of damage. 40 points of damage. So you just kill that dinosaur outright. You fire your crossbow, <laughs> right. and it goes, and it falls over dead. These things, are, these things are many, but they are not themselves particularly strong. Okay, then it's going to ricochet and hit the teeny tiny little one beside it which is v3 v5 v5 okay, v5. okay. Yeah. And, I still get... <laughs> and i still get advantage because i'm going before him yeah but y'all talking about druids being overpowered have we seen ilme only at the start man only at the start uh <laughs> 21 21 hits okay Oh god, that jumped everywhere. Aw oh, man, that was really sad. Only eight points. Eight points, it is still alive. <laughs> and then, how close is this? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Oh man, it's like 35 feet away. To the next closest. Okay, that's it. Alright, after Ilme, that brings us to Alexios. What are you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm looking... Wait, I have uh oh. Something just happened. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Well, if you're watching the stream, uh, the video conferencing software just crashed. Sorry about that. We'll get it back up and running momentarily. Hi, guys. Uh, sorry about okay, that. Uh, I'm getting the stream back. Okay, so I think, is he trying to talk on stream? Because it's not working over here. I don't know. Can I you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Like, 
Visually You're frozen. Not oh, that's great. How about <laughs> now? Yeah! Oh, no. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest, I have no idea what happened. Oh, well, I still have my bonus action. So great, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I'll shoot at the little guy again. Are they just like varying in sizes? Is that what they no, are? No, these, these are two different creatures. Uh, uh, the raptors, oh, the that's these... gonna be like a twenty something. That certainly hits. It. Oh, hey, eight. Eight. Eight points. That Velociraptor. <laughs> that second shot was all it took to do that one in as well. I can turn into these things. Like right now. Yeah. If yeah, if you wanted. Okay, I can confuse them. <laughs> All right, what? now it's Alexios' turn. Like, no, no, no! I'm one of you. Don't attack me. Oh. Wait. So are the dark circles? Those are tree trunks. The... Oh. Yeah. Oh wow! So there's. They're not even close together. No, not at all. Okay. The closest one to you, Alexios, is the one to your right, which is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 feet away from you right now. Okay, cool. So, dang, I thought it was more. Uh, I'm going to shoot the one closest to me. On Go the ahead. Right. D5. Uh, I'm going to add this. this. So I can add this to my wild shape now? Correct. Yes! This is both Dinonychus and Velociraptor. This is a sharp mission for shots, by the way. Okay. Oh, I'm not going to be able to remember this. Oh my god, yeah, I'm going to cry. 27. 27 certainly hits. Go ahead, roll damage. Uh... God. God. Uh, does it matter from which source material? Yes, it should be um, Monsters of the Multiverse. Okay. Because there's also Bolo's Guide to Monsters. Yeah, that one has now been updated in Monsters of the Multiverse. Um, what was that, Alexios? 23 on the first one. 23. It is just barely still alive as it gets shot with this arcane blast. Um, yeah, I'll shoot it. Go ahead. Pew pew. Uh... I want to be this thing 27. all the time. 27 hits. And... No, wait. Yeah, seven. Seven points of damage. That's all it takes. As you fire at this creature trying to sneak up on you, and it very quickly realizes the poor mistake it has made. Um, all right. Uh, Anything else, Alexios? Uh, hold on. I'm trying to see how long would I be. Oh no, no, never mind. <laughs> I can't do anything anymore. All right. Bless you. All right, you Alexios. Hundred. That brings us to Anura. What are you doing? Let me see where they're at. I'm sorry, I'm dying. Uh, um, so the closest one is a Velociraptor, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet away from you. What a cool fucking sentence, by the way. Isn't there one to my left that's closer than that? That is the one. Huh? I can't do math. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet. Oh, I just can't do math then. Ignore me. <laughs> um, I'm going to... Wild shape into a Dionychus. Okay, so as Alexios blows one up over on the other side of the battlefield, Anura just looks at it and goes, cool, and suddenly transforms into one of these monstrous creatures. Anything okay, else? So I'm gonna attack that one that's closest to me. Okay. Uh, you can move right up into melee. Go ahead and make That's your... for the 20 feet. So it's, I have multi-attack. 
So I get to make one bite attack first. Uh-huh. Uh, that's a 17 to hit. That hits. All right, so that's 1d8. That is four points of piercing damage. Four points, you got it. All right, and now I get to make two claw attacks. That's right. Uh, the first one is a 14. 14 hits. Oh! These are... Velociraptors are like the size of chickens. The Dinonychuses are the larger ones that are what the movies okay. are based on. All right. Um, that is going to be five points of slashing damage. All right. It is looking real, real bad. And the last one... Oh, uh, that was a tube before adding, so it doesn't hit. <laughs> it is hanging but on by a single thread. I need a DC 12 strength saving throw. Ah, so you do. That is a three. All right, so I get another bite attack against it as a bonus action. Yeah, absolutely. As you knock this Velociraptor prone. Hmm. This is fucking cool. <laughs> oh, it's eight, natural 18. That hits. You don't even need to roll damage. It has literally one hit point left. As this Dionychus form just rips into the Velociraptor's neck and rings it. <laughs> you guys have it's never so... seen a Nora this vicious. This is so fucking cool. All right. That brings us to the remaining Velociraptors. Let's go across the board here and just try to fucking find them. Sammy, um, I have a question. Real yeah. Quick. Yeah. Did we ever establish, since I don't use wild shapes that often, can I roll my hit points or are we using the median? We're using hit the, whatever, the, whatever the set hit points are. Okay. I yeah. couldn't remember if we were using the median or not. Um, all right. This Velociraptor, Jesus, 5, 10, 15, 20, is going to go up to Adagio. Mar. Um and it is going to make a bite attack on you. That oh. is, wow, that's not bad. That's an 18. Oh, what is my armor class? <laughs> 18 is my oh, armor class. Wow. So that hits. Wow, I get hit by Velociraptor. Um, oh. So that is going to be, okay, three points of piercing damage. Yeah. And then a claw attack as well. That's a seven total. So it nabs at you with its jaw, but its jaw is small. So it more just sort of like, draws some blood, and then tries to reach out at you with this one long claw, but you sort of are able to kick it out of the way. Um, <laughs> it's not its not as intimidating as it thinks it is. Um, there's that Velociraptor. This I'll one... Keep. Can I keep them? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. It's going to go up to Alexios and do the same thing. Bite attack. Natural 2, doesn't matter. And claw attack is a natural 3, doesn't matter. So... <laughs> Alexios, you you blow up this Dionychus, and then this Velociraptor, the smaller cousin, comes rushing up at you, and you just back up a step, and it misses both, both attacks. That's funny. And then we have one last one, who will just begin making a journey. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And Anora, you see on the other side of this little clearing that you're standing in is this little Velociraptor emerging from the shrubbery. Um, all right, Adagio, just, like, you're up. My head quick, just, like... <laughs> all right, Adagio, you have a Velociraptor at your heels. What are you doing? I'm going to rage and take my nice. claw form and show them how it's done. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you see it has this one large claw, and you just show it five large she... claws. <laughs> You thought. <laughs> like poker. That's a 19 to hit. 19 certainly hits. You know, I hate these dice. <laughs> That's a 7 points of slashing. <laughs> 7 points of slashing? Hey, it looks extremely hurt. That's okay. I get to swipe twice when it's a claw in one attack. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Ah, I lost my dice. <laughs> yeah. That's a uh, 21. That hits. Go ahead, roll damage. Uh, it's going to be 6 plus 3 plus 2. 
11. <laughs> this Velociraptor tries to hit you. You create your own claws and just slice it in twain. It is definitely dead. Yay. And since I attacked, I get to attack one more tank. I'm a barbarian. Uh, there's nothing to attack currently. But I still get to move, right? How do I get... Our, oh, yeah, yeah. Them? Honestly, with your full movement, I'm you can get to the fourth attack. Velociraptor. You can move past Ryujin and Ilmei to attack that Velociraptor coming at them. He's so tiny. Okay, yeah, Does somebody he's just move me on the map? Yeah. You're not where you're supposed to be. Who oh. moved Alexios? Yeah, somebody... I'll just kind of break you. Let's, let's move you back to Alexios. There you go. I don't know how it happened. I mean, where was I? How far am I from Alexios? <laughs> uh, you are 25 feet from Alexios. If you wanted to okay. get in melee range of that Velociraptor, you could move 30 feet to get right here, if you'd like. I mean, I have 40 feet of movement. I might as well. Okay, then I'll oh. swipe you twice. Yeah, if you have 40 feet, you can get to flanking if you'd like. Okay, bet. Flanking it is. Go ahead with advantage. <laughs> Use those pack tactics against it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's an unnatural 20. <laughs> that certainly hits. Go ahead, roll damage. That is nine points of damage. Okay, once again, and it is sorry, on death's door. I get to go again. Yep. <laughs> oh, that was a 19. How close? <laughs> well, ho. go ahead. You don't even need to roll damage. It's that one hit point. Um, no. So you That's... rip its brother in half, and then you rush up to this other one, and you see a moment of fear in its eyes before you just rip it into feathers and claws. Ow. <laughs> Anything else, Adagio? I'm gonna I'm go like this to like that, that one dinosaur, D4. <laughs> <laughs> you see it see. pees its pants. Um, all right, Ryujin, you are up. What are you doing? Okay, you got it. I just... Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Go ahead, roll damage. No, it doesn't hit. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> A plus 10 to that 13 definitely doesn't hit. <laughs> like, I'm not looking at the armor class of a Dionychus right now. Twelve damage. All right, it takes the hit. <laughs> Did you roll separate attacks for them? You're totally fine. Uh, sixteen definitely, definitely hits. hits. So. That would be the 15, then, if that's okay? Should gotcha. I roll? Yeah, no, no, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Um, and which is all you need. Those first two blasts are enough to... You just see in the distance, this Dionychus hits the deck and is gone. And then with my last one, I will target the other one, D3. You got it. But I... So you have one more strike. Uh... 16 plus 10, 26. Yep, absolutely. Oh, that's not good. Only 7 damage for that one. 7 points of damage. It is still up and angry. Anything else? Ryujin. He's angry. Um, yes, yeah, my bonus action. I'll summon the Spectral Wave. Alrighty. Just in case, you know? Just in case. Just Never in know. Case. Just in case. I'll have it hanging out. You can move that wherever you'd like. I think that's my turn. Alright, that brings us to the Dionychuses. No, Dionychus. 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 One emerges <laughs> from the stream. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Gets in melee with both uh, Adagio and... Alexios. I use my reaction to punch him in the face. <laughs> you might get a chance. Um, first, it's gonna it's gonna bite at Adagio. For what? That is uh, fifteen. 
Nope. Yeah, I thought. Uh, and then two claw attacks at Alexios. First one's a natural five. Second one is a natural two. So this Dionychus <laughs> runs up, ready to avenge his brothers, and then just whiffs, and you see the terror in its eyes. Um, <laughs> and then the second one, we get moving in. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty. Gets up and roars at you. Um, that brings us back up to Ilme. I shall uh, hit with my crossbow D4. Go Who's ahead. throwing a heart around the Dino? <laughs> Adagio. And I'll use my... Uh... No, actually, I'm not going to do that. Never mind. All right. me. Oh, no! I should have done it! It was a nat one! Rip. Can I use my divination and change that? Sure. What are you going to change it to? Wait, what was it? What are we doing? I just heard a bad roll. <laughs> I'm trying to She's hit attacking. Yeah. I changed it to my 18. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's nothing going to hit, yeah. Eight, so I don't think that yeah. works. <laughs> Dude, so now the question is, should I even roll dice? This one's at I mean, full it's seven, health. Is it at full health? Okay, that one's at yeah. full health. I was like, I got a lot of dice because I get my sneak attack. Can I just look at Elma and be like, remember, the wind is leaning to the left. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Divination. Twenty-seven points. Twenty-seven is exactly what you needed to take it from full hit points to dead as a fucking doornail. Hell yeah. And then I shall turn around and use my bonus action to hit the other one coming our way. Go ahead. Oh, that's cut. Okay, uh, 26. Certainly hits. Go ahead, roll damage. I changed that one point divination to an 8. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it would have hit. I, have a I think it fall. definitely would, yeah. <laughs> Uh, seven points. Actually, now that I look at it, this is a six, not an eight. <laughs> wow, um, all right, that one is still up, actually. Um, anything okay. else on May? Uh, nah, that's it. All right, Alexios, you're up. Wait, so is D3 still on the board? D3 is on the board. Uh, you see, there's a Velociraptor across the stream and an oddly star-like Dinonychus. Okay, so I'll aim for that one. <laughs> I wonder who that yeah. is. It's a shiny. It's a shiny. The weird shiny one, I'm going yeah. for that one. <laughs> so Just I'm saying, gonna shoot. The Lost Raptor's not gonna last. <laughs> You're gonna shoot um, the Dinonychus? Yeah, what's the yeah, the one close to uh, yeah, Dinonychus is the big one, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the big one. That's the one that we yeah. associate to be Velociraptors. Right. So Sorry. I'm gonna shoot that one, sharpshooter. Go ahead. That is a 19 hit. That certainly hits. hits. That hits. Go ahead, roll damage. Uh, 22 damage. That is more than enough. You see this wounded Dinonychus comes in and roars, and you just... And its head is like severed in twain and it just collapses. No. Nice shot. Five, ten, <laughs> Let me have the Velociraptor. Four, <laughs> I am you. Let <laughs> <laughs> Anora Anora have I it. Can I reach it from here? I am Anora right now. <laughs> I said Anora Anora. What are you? <laughs> Who's the Aim real Anora? Aim for the shiny. The uh, one who's fucking much... shiny, basically. <laughs> how many H? How much HP do these things have? It's Not gonna a lot. Die if you get it. <laughs> oh yeah, if it's yeah, cause it's small. It's a <laughs> tiny little boy. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, that brings Thank us you. to Anora. I like this form. Okay, so 
And Nora's having fun with it now because they're getting to use wild shapes they've never used before, whole nine yards. So this thing is like 20 feet away, right? Uh, At 5, least. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, full 30, right up to it. And, it, and Nora like playfully almost bounds towards it, just like super sure. excited by the storm, yeah. not used to the gangly legs and everything. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to make the first attack, the bite attack. That's an actual two. The bite attack doesn't hit. Woof. <laughs> it's, but now I have two This claw form attacks. is so excited that it just, like, misses this Velociraptor entirely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, the next one is going to be a 16 to hit. That hits. All right. It's going to be four plus two. All right. That's going to be five points of... Five points. Flashing and another claw attack. That's going to be another 16. That hits. And then that's going to be six points of slashing damage. Dianicus and Nora, take your moment. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, so Dianicus and Nora is just like, you know, bounding around, has like these gangly legs they're not used to, and like slashes out and like instead of like fully slashing up the claws i like bitch slap this velociraptor on accident <laughs> <laughs> and it goes down as soon as the second one hits and that's the one that's the bitch slap <laughs> so you guys watch as this starry form dynanicus just bounds up to this velociraptor and you see it pimp slap it into next year <laughs> as it is just a mess on the forest floor that was fun. All right. Who would like to roll the next d20? Can I ask that we take a short rest real quick? Because I am out of wild shapes. You can I'm take a long it. rest if you want. Yeah. I up to y'all. I just I want to spend the sun and babe for the re points of health. <laughs> I don't care. If y'all want to take a long rest, I'm fine with that. I'll just work here. Sure, it allows me to get my boots back because I wasted them. Yeah, let's do the long rest. Okay. Um, during said long rest, can I like sit there with underbrush out, just kind of thinking, and ask Huntress Alexandra to come hunt with me, hunt with me one more time? I will remind you that when you pray to Artemis here, that is you saying that you are done exploring and you're ready for the next thing. Oh, I wasn't gonna like. I don't want to okay. do that. Just wanted to make wanted sure. I just want to ask her to come hunt with me, not exactly pray. Uh, I, I don't Can know. Can I ask? I think... So Reed said I could call to him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I call Reed? Sure. You And you, ask Reed. You just call out his name, and he appears from behind a tree not too far away from you. You get the sense that you're being observed this entire time, and he's just one set of eyes. But he just pops his head. Hey, Hey, I have a couple of questions, because I want to learn more about Adagio when he was a kid. Okay, um, what do you want to know? I don't know, just like some childhood stories of what y'all got up to as kids. Well, I mean, what we did mo more than anything was play around the edges of the, the forest, and we'd pretend to be Artemis and Apollo, and we'd pretend that we were amazing hunters and gods and... But the challenge was that we both sort of wanted to be Artemis. Um, but we, we found a way to make it work. I'm sorry, Adash, you wanted to be Artemis? Ah! That's so cute. I probably, I, is this weird for me to be telling you this? If, if he hasn't told you this, you guys have been traveling together for who knows how long. I feel bad that I'm the one telling this to you. So, I feel like, so I just wanted, like, the cutesy stories that, like, his mom would tell us and stuff like that. Well, um... Stuff like that, because I've would... never got the chance to meet his mom because of a lot of stuff. Well, he would play music for the littler kids. That was really fun. Everyone loved when Adagio came downstairs with his instrument and would play music for everyone, but... I don't know, I, I missed a lot of that, too. You know? And yeah. you see, for the first time, he gets sort of sad. He's... You give up a lot when you come here. And I gave up him. And I've come to terms with that. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't make me sad. 
Yeah, when I finally come here for good, and I'm just going to turn back and look to all of the party. I'll give him up and all of them, too. This is where you're supposed to be. It's where all of us are supposed to be, those of us that follow the goddess. And whatever journey you go on, this is where it ends. It's where it should end. Yeah. You'd be happy here. I am. Already. Good. And you've only scratched the surface. There's so much you haven't even seen yet. It feels like it. I can, it's, I can feel that there's more out there. I feel more at home here than I have anywhere except that temple with Artemis. That's because this is the temple. The temple is this. All of this that you're feeling, it's, it's her. I don't know how I got so lucky that she decided that I could be her kid. Yeah. I don't know how I got lucky to get chosen by the Dryads to come here when I was just a kid. I I don't know. But when good things happen, it's best not to question them. The fates knew, no, the fates know what they're doing. That's for sure. Sure seems that way. Get some rest. There's more adventures to be had. Yeah, before he leaves, can I look to him? Um, I know that I can't pray to her right now because that'll end all of this, but if you can talk to her, can you ask her if she'll come hunt with me one more time before I'm done hunting? It's been a it's while. Not, it's not time for that. Yeah. Before he leaves, I want to reach out when he goes to leave and like do like the full like grab each litter up his like forearm and everything. Mm hmm I'll make sure he knows you're safe. Please do. And that you miss him. And also, if he tries to come find me, try to stop him. Let him he know. can exist in this form here because he's just you, but if non-followers of the goddess find a back door to come here, it it doesn't end well for any of them. He's moving in a direction where I don't think he would try that anymore. Good. He's moving in a direction where he, he's grown enough to know not to and accept where you've gone. Good. Well, go. This is my own curiosity speaking, but really we're not supposed to talk to you. We're just supposed to watch. So, sorry. You do you. I'm out. I was mainly he talking leaves. to you about Adagio, so it's fine. <laughs> he leaves. So, you guys take your long rest. At the end of your long rest, I would like all of you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. All of us? All of you. Whoever rolls the okay. lowest gets advantage from moonlit clarity from me. Wisdom saving throw. Um... <laughs> And I 24. can add the one as well. 24 for Ryujin? Adagio? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't see what my wisdom adds. <laughs> okay, so I rolled it at one. Okay, so you, so can you'll, you can take that. Advantage. Yeah, you can take that reroll. <laughs> I rolled a 12 altogether. 12 altogether I'll from Adagio? I'll add to that. Uh, are you sure? Because my next roll was a 2. <laughs> God damn it. I can add to both of them, I guess. I don't know. I mean, this is all happening at the same time, so I'm saying you yeah. can only do one. Uh, wait, yeah, I'm going to plus five one, the other one that you don't do. Okay, I'll add to Ilme. But I got a 19. Okay. I got a 26. Okay. I'll add to Ilme. Add six to yours, Ilme. Okay, so that's 12. Okay. Oh my god. 12. Then what's Adagio's total? <laughs> You got plus you got plus five. Oh, then I have a seventeen total. Okay. So, Ilme, the the part of Anura's subconscious that you represent is very comfortable here. And 
when this part of a neuro subconscious awakens, it's with a task. And that task is to make sure that Anura stays this happy. And the only way to keep Anura happy is to keep them here where they belong. Sammy. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, Sammy? <laughs> is Anura like Stockholm syndroming themselves? No, mm -hmm. you are genuinely happy here, and you do feel like you have a sense of belonging here. And Ilmay's part of your subconscious is the part of you, the voice in the back of your head that's saying, we could just stay. Can't. I mean, I'll go up to Anora and I'll be like, when was the last time you felt this content? Back in that temple. Then why would you ever want to give this up? I know it's here when the quest is over. And we're getting closer and closer to that every day. Which means every day I get closer and closer to being here forever. But it's not time for me to be here forever yet. There's still so much to do with all of you back on Gaia. But there's also, you never know when it'll happen. What if it happens when you wake up? Why feel that pain to just come back? Why not just stay here and you won't feel that anymore? One of the things that I learned a long time ago that allowed me to even be in this place in the first place that there is a circle of life and that everything happens in a circle of life when it's supposed to. But what if that's right now? You're here. I'm not the one to make that decision. But I am you. I'm not the one to make that decision. Then who, whose decision is it? It's your life. It is my life, but it's a life I devoted to upholding the tenets of Artemis, protecting the wild, and I would do anything to protect her as well, because she's the one who gave me the chance of this life anyway, and staying here means I can't protect her anymore. But staying here, you'll be by her side. And there's a whole mess that she'd face without any of my help. And albeit that's not that much in the face of a goddess, but that could be the difference between her being here when I come back and her never being here again. But if she's never gonna be here again, don't you wanna spend as much time as you can? If you go back, you lose that. If I don't go back, if I don't go back, she won't be here anymore at all. And I can't risk that. Would someone please roll me a d20? I got you. Five. Five. This conversation continues as camp begins to get all bundled up and the adventure continues. Anura, you find yourself talking to Ilmay, or more so Ilmay talking to you as you guys travel. Oddly persistent. But the entire time, while you hear Ilmay's voice, you also hear your own. And you know that this is not Ilmay. This is the Ilmay part of you. But you continue on your adventure. You come across other new animals. You come across a large dinosaur, um, squat, four-legged, uh, with a big sail on its back. Uh, you see another with more rounded features. It walks on two legs with 
um, sort of shriveled up arms with a big backward horn on its head and sort of uh, a rounded mouth it seems to, uh, as you see it, it's eating some berries off of a bush. They seem to be more gentle creatures, prey animals, like what deer are currently. You watch them, you can hunt them if you wish, or you can just observe them. They're beautiful creatures. As you keep walking, eventually you find yourself in a clearing that is somewhat familiar, Anora. It's oh, not... Please. Yeah? Please tell me this is what I think it is, Sammy. <laughs> I don't know. What, what do you think it is? I don't know. I'm scared. Okay. Um, By somewhat familiar, what do you mean somewhat familiar? So, it doesn't look like anywhere you've been before, but it does feel like you've been here before. The does best... it feel like that place in the woods where I found underbrush? It does. Yeah, that was right. It feels like that pool of clarity, though looking around, you don't see a, any similar pool, but you get the sense that you are in a similarly sacred site. You see that you almost feel yourself drawn toward a small altar made of mossy stone sitting in this circle of trees that are somewhat disjointed from the rest of the forest. There's a bit of a clearing and these 14 trees surrounding this one stone altar. What would you like to do? Um, have I seen all of the other dinosaurs that I can turn into, like, all uh, wandering around at this point? Yes, you have. So I've seen all the ones I can turn. Okay. Yeah. That's what I wanted to make sure. Um, I want to turn back to the party that is technically me, but still, like, you know, how I would envision them. I think this is as far as you go with me for now. And I want to turn to each of them, even knowing that they're part of me, and give them each a hug. See you in a little while. When Nora comes up to me, I'll just say, remember what you're giving up here if you decide to leave. I'd be giving up all of you. When Anora comes up to Ryujin, I'm going to be like, mid-hug, you know we've always got your back. Took me a while to realize it, but you do. All of you do. And before I uh, walk, turn away and walk to the altar, I'll turn to Ilme. I know you're a part of me that wants to stay here because I'm happy here, and I'm the happiest I've been since I was a child in that temple with Huntress Alexandra. But staying here now would be giving up all of you well before it's time to give up all of you. And I'll turn and walk towards the altar. As you walk towards the altar, you can feel, not so much see as your back is turned, but you can feel the figures of your friends fade into breeze and air and nothingness as you walk towards the altar and you feel the presence of Artemis. By the time you get to this altar, she's standing on the other side of it, appearing to you as Huntress Alexandra with tears in her eyes. Why are you, you don't cry? Why are you crying? You don't have to go back. There's nothing but death and pain waiting for you. I'm gonna put underbrush down on the altar and cross to the other side of the altar and take both of her hands and go to start speaking and before i start speaking i'll drop both of her hands and just hug her instead
I know I don't have to go back. I don't know at this point, I really don't think you want me to go back. I just want you to There's... know what you're going back to. No matter what, I'm going back to a certain death for me. I accepted that a long time ago. And so have been what I couldn't bring him back. If you are determined to return to that world, I will not deprive you of that. But this ritual, the ending of this journey, is at this point where I'm supposed to give you a gift and a reward. You've given me more than anybody could have ever hoped to. And yet I will give you more. I will give you a reward, but the gift that I should give you is a warning. First, may I see your sickle? I'll go to turn back to get underbrush, but because I'm still kind of in this idea of, you know, how is this real? I want to, like, grab onto her arm when I turn around and reach back to grab it. And then when I turn back around, hand her under brush. She takes it in her hands. You have done more than enough to unlock the full potential of this specimen. And if you are determined to continue along the path that you are going, then you will need it to be in its finest form. And you see her hands glow golden white as this beautiful sickle elongates and becomes slightly sharper. And you see the hilt vines wrap around it and new runes appear on it. She hands it back to you. That is the reward, but that is not the gift. Uh, real quick, can I, uh, with that, the way that the vines wrap around, can they make sure that they include in that earring that Ilme got from my dad that's been hanging on the end of it so that it's oh, yeah. now included into it yeah, instead absolutely. of just hanging? Yeah, it gets tucked in. Yep. That was the reward, but it's not the gift. The gift is knowledge. I know the gods talk. I know that you and your friends are planning to take on Tromocrates. Is that true? We have to take as many players off the board as we can. Then you have to understand what it is that you're getting yourself into. I am going to take you somewhere. Your friends will join you as well. Somewhere on Gaia. There's a creature that I want you to fight. A creature that is not as powerful as Tromocrates, but is of a similar class. A creature that shares Tromocrates' ability, that when it's at its weakest, it's able to summon extra strength and continue fighting unlike anything you've seen or you've faced before. Now, this creature is very different from Tromocrates in most ways, but I would feel more at ease knowing that you had faced a creature like this before. Do you accept? Yes, but can we just sit here a little bit before I go back? Sit as long as you'd like. When you are ready. Please when sit. You're ready, we're going to the forest of the dead. Will you sit with me? Of course. 
when we sit, because uh, I'm assuming now she's closer to like, you know, where I could reach up to her. Mm -hmm. I want to reach and wipe the tear tracks off real quick. Okay. I know it would be easier to stay. And I don't think I can express how much I want to stay. Because this is the happiest I've been. Since the stars led me to that temple and you showed me what unconditional love was and what it meant to have a family. When people were making sure that I couldn't know that feeling before. But staying here means I might lose that. And I can't lose that. This is the least I can do after everything you've done to get me to this point. I understand. This is your hero's quest. They will write songs about this for generations to come, I have no doubt. I suppose my brother and cousins and the other Olympians, they're all much more used to this, but you're the only child I've ever had to put you knowingly in danger. It's something I'm not quite used to yet. You know, at the end of the day, I'll always be back here no matter what. I'll still be that little tiefling who can't even run straight without falling over because I'm not used to being able to run free. Running around the temple trying to figure it all out. And at the end of the day, once I've gone through everything, once I've dealt with whatever I'm going to have to deal with in Tartarus to fix my mistakes, I will be right back here for the rest of eternity. And there's nothing you'll be able to do to get rid of the annoying child that you took in. If the fates will it so. If the fates don't will it so, they're going to have a very angry purple teethling who grew a tree in the, in the mountains of the fates. Come. Time grows short. Are you ready? As I'll ever be. Well. Have you ever been to the Forest of Souls? I'm assuming no. There are things you must know before I send you in blind. It is said that the forest is where Demeter started the first winter. That when that powerful wave of necrotic energy washed over the continent, the forest was at its centre. And that even once that first winter passed and vegetation came back, that forest remained dead. And it remains dead to this day. Nothing can grow on that soil. But there was a woman in the forest at that time. A woman who was caught up in that necrotic wave. A woman who was transformed by that powerful magic surge and has spent all her time since becoming stronger. That is who you are looking for. They call her Arasta of the Endless Web. Look for the spiders. Follow them to their queen. Why does it have to be spiders? Indeed. Come. She puts her thumb on your forehead. Let us go. See you soon. This entire world turns to black. Um, you can replace the underbrush in your inventory to underbrush deific. I forgot to ask about if I could have to keep the megalodon tooth. You did forget. Damn it. Um, all the rest of you, 
wherever you are in the world at that time, eventually you find yourselves to sleep. And when you awaken from your slumber, you find yourself in a campsite with Anura, surrounded by the corpses of skeletal trees. Welcome to the Forest of Souls. That's where I'll pick up next week. Yeah, never bitch. Said <laughs> Sorry for cutting it short. I am full of muke. Uh, so, yes, uh, underbrush deific. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Welcome to the Beast Wilds. Uh, but now we head into a much darker place um, for a very exciting encounter. Uh, Man, so, thank you for joining us. Son of a bitch. I know, which is a lot coming from me, someone who hates spiders so, so much. <laughs> Even putting them in this campaign, I was cringing a bit. Um, thank you guys for joining us. We'll be here same time, same place next week on Monday. Um, this episode will go out in its entirety on YouTube on Saturday. Until then, we love you. We'll see you next time. Bye!